Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Alexandre Borges. I'm a malware and security research at Blackstorm Security. Uh, let's talk about malware, be obfuscation, and emulation. It's a very short uh, presentation, only 190 uh, slides. So let's go. It's my profile, and um, that's my agenda for today. We will see something about anti-reversing, Metasm framework. We will see something about um, Miasm, Triton, Hadar. We touch something about G-Trace on Windows. And finally, a very interesting trick using as an anti-virtual machine detection. Let's start. I've been uh, uh, analyzing malware for many years. Uh, honestly, most of them use uh, these packers, a spec, Armadillo, Petit, and so on. Uh, it's okay. We know how to unpack them. Uh, it's so easy. Uh, most of them are pretty easy to unpack. We also know uh, the main memory APIs. Uh, like these ones in red. And we also know how to use a debugger. We know how to set up some breakpoints. Uh, we know how to dump, unpack uh, binary from memory, how to dump, inject code from memory. Uh, we can uh, use a very special tools like PC from Harsharizat uh, is, a, is a, an excellent tool. We can use volatility uh, to dump, uh, inject code and unpack the code from the memory and uh, fix its uh, in import address table uh, by using, for example, a very special plugin named Gimpscan. It's so easy to do that. We can also write very short scripts for debuggers. For example, in this case, I wrote a very short script to dump, unpack the inject code from memory in X64 debugger. It's so easy to do that. I try to comment line by line for help you later. Uh, we have uh, one, two, and three slides containing these scripts, so it's pretty easy to do that. However, the real world is uh, a bit different. In the real world, in the real world, uh, things are different. For example, yes, I can write uh, some plugins in IDA Pro. It's uh, so uh, common to do that. I can uh, write new loaders, for example, to load some uh, no binary, uh, like, for example, MBR file. Uh, but modern packers have been using different tricks, different anti reverse tricks uh, to make our lives harder. Some packers, such as v VM Protect, Temida, Arxan, and Agile have been using different tricks, hard tricks to bypass. And uh, our goal here is try to explain what can I do to circumvent some of these tricks. Most of these packers uh, have been focused on 64 code. Uh, they have been using so different tricks to do that. For example, these uh, packers, these advanced packers, remove the import order tables, of course. They try to uh, encrypt every single uh, string inside the code. They try to protect the memory uh, using a kind of memory checking, so in this case, it's uh, almost impossible to dump 
the code from memory because the code is encrypted on the memory. In this case, it, it's impossible to modify or dump uh, the whole code from, from memory. Uh, these packers for in, in use, for example, very uh, interesting tricks uh, when protecting .NET code, for example, rename classes, methods, fields, and so on. But much worse, these packers uh, virtualize Intel instructions to a very special kind of instructions. I mean, I have an uh, Intel instruction being, vi being virtualized to a virtual machine uh, uh, environment using Spark, uh, using Spark sometimes, using RISC code. In this case, uh, it's so complicated to bypass. Additional tricks used by these advanced uh, packers. Uh, all instructions are encrypted, unfortunately. Most of obfuscation is stack-based, so it's uh, so hard to handle statically. The virtualized code is polymorphic. In this case, for example, one type instruction can be mapped to several different virtualized instructions. We have lots of fake push instructions. We have many dead codes. We have code reordering. In this case, uh, it's a kind of spaghetti code. We have uh, a very special trick named code flattening. I will, I will speak about that later. And we have tons of anti-debugger and anti-virtual machine techniques. We don't know nothing about the internals of these virtual machines. These protectors have been using very special and private virtual machines to translate the Intel code to a virtualized code. We don't know anything about that. However, we know that uh, the general idea is, al is, almost the, uh, is always the same. Uh, instruction uh, must be fetched, decoded. We have to find uh, the pointer to the handlers. And finally, we have to execute each one of these handlers. That's the general idea. I have an instruction. This instruction is decoded. And once the instruction is decoded, the dispatcher pick up one of these handler to process the instruction. Uh, in the real world, it's a bit more complicated because the virtualized instructions are organized into an array. In this case, you, uh, you won't see so many opcodes in the virtualized code. You will see some indexes. Indexes point to the encrypt instruction. Once the instruction is decrypted, we have the opcode point to the function pointer. And finally, from the function uh, pointer, we have the handler being executed. Additionally, we have other tricks, other anti-reverse techniques being used. For example, code unfolding. In this case, uh, packer, these advanced packers take one constant and turn it to several constants. We have pattern-based obfuscation. I, I will talk about that later. We have 
so many inline functions inside the code. We have tons of anti virtual machine techniques. We have tons of garbage code. And of course, we have many, many, many duplicated code. Furthermore, we have other tricks uh, being used. In this case, for, for example, we have some countering that action. Uh, there are uh, some very interesting uh, tricks being used here. For, uh, for example, using the return instruction to skip code, skip dead code. Uh, these packers use uh, exceptions. These packers also use opaque predicates. Uh, opaque predicates is a very low trick. It's basically a back-to-back -back jump Z and jump any Z instruction. Apparently, you have a conditional jump, but indeed, uh, the same instruction stake, the same branch stake in, a, in the other one is never taken. I will uh, talk about that later too. I have a very uh, educational example here. I know that we don't have enough time to see and learn how to write IDAP plugins here, but I left some um, procedure step by step for helping later about how to set up your environment to write IDAP plugins using Visual Studio. Uh, in this case, uh, we have one, two, and three slides uh, explain how to set up your environment and uh, to write uh, IDA Pro plugin. Uh, I've been using IDA Pro plugin to handle this complex and reverse case. Uh, of course, we don't have enough time here, unfortunately. But I wrote a very simple IDA Pro plugin. Uh, this plugin is so basic, I try to comment line by line for help you. And this plugin uh, aims to find web links inside a binary. So uh, I wrote this plugin here. I try to comment every single line, every single important instructions. And I executed it. As you see, it works. I, I'm able to find, for example, web links inside a binary. You can also use uh, processor models. It's an uh, extension of plugins in IDA Pro. It's so hard uh, to explain that uh, now. But I left some uh, very basic explanation here for help you. But returning to our problem, imagine this problem. It's a very, very, very simple program written in C language. C is quite easy. And this program has a linear execution. I mean, the execution is straight. Only these blocks. Uh, of course, obviously, we don't have any kind of obfuscation here. We don't have obfuscation here. When we uh, disassemble it in the IDA Pro, the code is so simple too. But my idea is using a very low trick, anti versity trick named code flattening. When I apply code, uh, code flattening technique on this code, I transform this code in from linear execution to multi-branch execution. You know, it's the same code. But in this case, we have a linear execution. And in this case, we have a multi-branch execution. When I open this code in the IDA Pro, I will see a multi-branch 
disassembly. You can try uh, and make some tests using code flattening. For example, I use the obfuscator WFM to do that. I, I left uh, the complete procedure about how to install it. At the bottom, I show you uh, how to run this kind of obfuscator. And as you see, we got the same code obfuscated. Pay attention, look at that. The same code, but this time we have a multi branched execution. Obfuscation is so used in the industry. It's so hard to circumvent them, but uh, we have some techniques to do that. This, uh, this is a uh, one overview, and this is the decompiled code. Look at that. Originally, we had only one while statement. Now we have one while statement, three if statements and one else statement. This is a, a very short example about opaque predicate. Take a look. We have two jump conditionals, jump Z and jump NZ con instructions back to back together. However, the XOR instructions above is establishing that only the jump zero is taken. The another jump is never taken. It's a very no trick when you are handling anti-reversing tricks. This is a shell code, very simple shell code. There at top in red, we have it. Uh, the uh, decryption routine, very simple. And once I wrote a very simple IDA Pro script, uh, I decoded it statically, and you see the decrypted shell code in light blue below. Another anti reverse trick so used is call stack manipulation. Apparently, is a very easy code to read. However, pay attention. The writing instruction, the return instruction is not true. It's not a true return. This return instruction is, is skipping these blue instructions in the through return instruction is this one. This is a very used technique uh, by this kind of advanced protectors. So, as I promised you, I will show some tricks to handle different kind of obfuscation. Uh, let's take a very educational sample. Imagine this scenario. I have just one instruction in, gl in green, edge EAX, ECX. Once this instruction is obfuscated, we have the second stage in yellow. Obfuscate again, we have the third stage in orange. Finally, we have the last stage, four, in red. The question is, how can I reverse the process? How can I go from the stage four and find that all of these instructions are equal to just one instruction, add EAX, ECX.
First, I will use a very interesting framework named Metasme. Metasme is, is an uh, amazing framework. Metasme supports different platforms. And I show you how to install Metasme at bottom, step by step. OK, I test it. And let's go. Take a look. I pick up all of these instructions in the stage four. Sorry. And I insert it here. My choice is using 32 bits. And I try comment line by line, block by block, block by block to help you later. Uh, basically, the key points here are the yellow line, because I'm initializing the backtracking engine. And uh, I will try to solve our problem symbolically using opcodes. Uh, I'm logging each uh, executed instruction. And finally, I'm showing you only the effective instructions here. I run our code. Our code uh, uh, was, um, was written in Ruby. There we have our initial obfuscate code. And if you take a look, we have here instructions being executed one by one, containing all the register information and flags one by one. And finally, we have EAX at top is equal EAX plus ECX. You see, you've seen it's possible to deobfuscate all or obfuscate code and find that the bunch of instructions, the bunch of obfuscation instructions are equal EAX to ECX. So easy. The effective instructions are those ones. Additionally, I try to use emulation uh, using a very nice combination between key, the Keystone and UMU. UMU is a IDA Pro plugin. Once again, I show you how to install Keystone here. And this time, my choice was uh, write a C language program. I try to comment line by line again for help you. If you take a look, the key line is the second one and the third one. Uh, in the second one, I'm creating a Keystone engine. In the second one, I'm starting in using the Keystone engine. In this case, Keystone is, a, is an assembler. So I'm assembling the instructions in opcode to X decimal. I executed, and at the middle, I got the X decimal equivalent to our opcodes. I saved it uh, in a file named defcon2019.bin. Uh, to prove that I, that I was right, I make another program use this time capstone. Capstone make the inverse process. 
This time, I'm disassembly. I inserted uh, our output from last slide. I wrote a new program using Capstone. OK, I'm uh, programming here in C language. And I proved that I was right. Uh, I got the same inserted code. But returning to our problem, I opened our file defcon 2009.bin in the IDA Pro. It opened perfectly. And I used UMU. I show you how to install UMU at top. I set up the EAX23. I set up ECX26. And I emulated it using UMU. Finally, I found EAX is equal EAX to ECX9. In this case, I solve numerically. I also used the Unicorn. Unicorn is, a, is an emulator. Once again, I wrote a very simple program in C language. I inserted our X decimal here. I created a macro named DEFCON code. I tried to comment this program line by line or block by block. My comments are in blue, light blue. Uh, here we have two key points. First, I set up, I set the EAX to four. I set ECX to seven, and I set a uh, stack size. I start the emulation here in the second line. Sorry. I started the emulation here in the first line in yellow. Once more, I executed our program. Our initial values are EAX4, ECX7. Line by line, instruction by instruction are executed. And our final result, EAX is equal EAX to ECX B11 in decimal. I've also used Miasm. Miasm is another amazing framework to deobfuscate codes. Miasmi uh, works so well in different platforms. Once again, I show you how to install Miasmi step by step to help you. I tested Miasmi. It generates a very nice graph. But let's return to our problem. I open our file, DEFCON 2019. In at the first lines. I set 32 bits. I set our just-in-time machine to WLVM. I set our initial address, the initial value of EAX to 3, the initial value uh, of ECX to 6, and I set up the final breakpoint here. Once I run, we have our code disassembled. Each instructions are executed line by line. And finally, I have our numerical result here. A nice graph. Additionally, I also have our problem and use symbolic execution. Almost the same. However, 
the only change is at bottom. I use a, sim a symbolic execution engine here. I execute our program once, once more, instruction by instruction, and finally, I have the EAX is equal to EAX initial plus ECX initial. As you see, I'm able to deobfuscate a very simple code by using different platforms, by using different frameworks. I've also used Triton. Triton has another very interesting platform. In this case, Triton supports uh, x86 and x64 architectures. Triton supports symbolic execution. In this case, uh, I'm, I'm able to emulate only part of my program. But I can uh, use the concolic execution to uh, analyze the whole program. Once again, I show you how to install Triton. Uh, in this case, without using PIN from Intel. In the next slide, using PIN from Intel. Step by step, it's working. I wrote a very simple uh, program in Python. I insert our, uh, I insert our uh, code here using X decimal. I try to comment again, line by line, block by block, in blue, for help you. And oh, here is very interesting, because some people don't know how to convert from opcode to Xcode. So uh, I show you how, uh, how to do that uh, using uh, RASM from Hader. Oh. Of course, uh, you can use Yida Pro, Ghidra, and so on to do that, but I show you uh, how to do that using uh, Hader, Hasm. So I executed our Python program using Triton, and I was able to symbolic solve our problem. Once again, all instructions are shown. And finally, I know that all the obfuscate code is equivalent a simple edge operation. I tried to solve it using a numerical approach, using the same Triton framework. Sorry. I wrote another program in Python. I inserted the same code there, the same obfuscate code, the stage four. However, this time, I set up the initial value of each re register, e uh, ESP, EBP, EAX, EBX, CX, DX. I set up the entry point, the entry point address, and I start the processing. Each instruction is executed one by one, and finally, at the bottom, and at, in yellow, we have the answer. We can use Hader to handle our problem. I start Hader using 32 bits. I enabled the emulation in Hader. As you can see, there are many issue comments here. I set the EAX to 7, ECX to uh, 2. I set the breakpoint 
here. And I run our program. As you see, we have that EAX is equal EAX to ECX 9. We can uh, integrate Hader to Miasme. In this case, the Miasme is the working gene. And Hader uh, reads the Miasme results and show you as a issue comment. It's quite easy to do that. I show you here, step by step. And I run Hader using Miasme integrated. As you see, we can see all issue comments here coming from Miasm, but translated to issue comments in Hader. Uh, the trace is an outstanding tool. The, taste, the trace was introduced in Solar Stern uh, 15 years ago. It's an amazing dynamic tracing tool. And recently, the trace was supported to Windows, two months ago. Honestly, the trace is a set of probes. Uh, basically, probes are scattered on the kernel. And each time that a system call is called, the probe is triggered. The uh, scripts in the trace can be uh, written in D language. It's a very uh, unusual language, D language. In the general composition, the general uh, uh, f format of a probe is provider, model, function, and name. Provider is the library. Model is the kernel model, function is the system call, and name is the name of the probe. I show you how to install the trace on Windows 10. It's quite easy to do that. And here I show uh, uh, some commands using dtrace. I list all the probes using the trace minus L. I list all providers except system call and ETW providers. I can list uh, all probes related to system calls. In this case, read system calls, write system calls, and view system calls. It's quite easy to do that. Here's a very short example about the G-trace. Uh, uh, in this case, I'm counting the number of times that a system call is called when I'm using Notepad, for example. Another very interesting example, I can list all running process in my machine. For example, in this case, I run this very simple line, very simple command using dtrace, and I could uh, get the running process on my machine. This is a bit more complicated sample. In this case, I count the number of times that each system call is called by Chrome during only five seconds. Another, uh, another example here, I list the number of times that a system call is called in my whole machine. The trace has a very interesting provider. 
named Function Boundary Tracing. Using Function Boundary Tracing, I'm able to trace the system calls being called in the kernel end. To do that, I need to attach a kernel debugger to Windows 10, and this fact enable function boundary tracing. For, for example, in this case, I can use WinDebug to attach to Windows 10 and enable function boundary tracing. Look at that. I can trace all system calls related to any TFS for the WinHard program. It's quite easy. I've been using that uh, to analyze some malware. Of course, unfortunately, JTrace is so new uh, on Windows, and some problems happen. In my case, my system crashed, and I provide you a very short investigation about the problems. In, in this case, uh, there is a kernel model named tracex.sys, that the main model of GTrace. I show you uh, step by step uh, how uh, I can investigate the problem. And finally, I found that the guilt problem, the guilt instruction, is that one in green. I didn't have enough time to notify the Microsoft, but that's it. Finally, a few months ago, uh, I saw a very strange, very strange anti-virtual machine technique being used by an uh, advanced protector. Uh, we know, uh, usually, most uh, malwares, most malware samples uh, have been used uh, different uh, anti-virtual machine techniques to detect virtual machines such as VM, VirtualBox, Parallels, and so on. It's, uh, it's quite easy to write a C-sharp program to detect a virtual machine. Uh, it's quite easy. You can use, for example, this class, Win32, BIOS manage class to do that. It's quite easy, and I show you here a very, very, very simple code to detect virtual machines. Uh, I run this code. I comment uh, some lines there at top. I comment the uh, use the functions. And at bottom, as you see, I run my program in a physical host and in a guest virtual machine. As you see, it's uh, quite easy to know that uh, at the right side, I'm using a virtual machine. However, it's not the problem. It's not the question. It's not the issue. I saw a very strange te technique using temperature. Uh, I thought, whoa. How can I use the temperature to detect virtual machines? I try to reproduce this technique using C Sharp. I wrote a very short program here, but I received a, an error at bottom. No reference exception. And I try to investigate what happened. I use the Windows Manage Instrumentation Tester to do that uh, at the bottom. One, two, three, and four. And I found that in a virtual machine, I don't have temperature probes. Windows doesn't offer me any kind of temperature probe. I highlighted it at the middle of the picture. So. It was easy. I translated this fact to my program. 
And I added a exception handler to handle these strange situations. Finally, my program was able to detect user temperature, to detect physical host or a virtual machine. I've been using uh, several techniques to circumvent this trick, but I believe that you will see this technique uh, more often. Finally, my conclusions. Uh, people uh, have asked me how to bypass anti-reverse techniques. First, you need to do all the techniques being used. After, you try to use uh, different frameworks, such as uh, MIAS, METAS, Triton, and so on. Emulation is a good alternative, of course. And D-Trace is a new old tool that uh, recently was ported to Windows, and I have been using it uh, to solve some uh, reversing problems. I, I would like to thank you, DEFCON staff and you, who reserved some time to be here. Thank you so much for attending my talk. Have a nice day. Any question? Questions? Please. All right, bye. Sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm just wondering, um, how do you deal with those uh, programs that has been obfuscated by Timida? Sorry? Like uh, by Timida, like ver VM protected. I mean, the uh, the virtual machine based malware. It's like uh, you there are like different tricks to you prevent yes. my virtual machine uh, of being uh, detected by a malware sample. Different tricks. Uh, usually, uh, I I try to set up a very specific virtual machine, uh, and when I modify the uh, VM, VMX uh, file to prevent being detected. No, uh, I mean, my, my question is, what if it has been protected by VM-based? It's like, uh, for instance, like uh, Timida. Th Timida? Yeah, Timida. It's like uh, it uses VM itself. Yes, I use VM, yeah, yes. I, I, it, it uses VM. I mean, Timida, the malware itself uses VM, just like a Java program, and you use just in time to just in time technique to compile it into bytecode and execute one line and then discard discard that bytecode and then execute the next line. I mean just uh, so it's like uh, basically just uh, running in a, the malware itself is running in a virtual machine that has been provided by itself. I mean just attached to, to it. And the virtual machine itself has been metamorphosed. Because uh, I, I, I have seen this kind of technique has been used in, in, in Timida. Myself, I was trying to, to reverse that, but, I, but not very successful. So I was, I, was, I was just wondering, what's your take on that thing? I have so many tricks to, to do that. Uh, I can explain to you uh, there are many tricks to deceive Timida. Uh, and, uh, you mean what? There are many tricks uh, to circumvent the name Temida techniques. There are many, many tricks in using virtual machines. I, uh, I can't talk about that. Uh, I can't explain every single point because uh, it's a very long topic. Very, very long topic. It's very topic. complicated. It's and and I, don't know, I don't know if there is any known approach. So I was just wondering if, if the, uh, the emulation approach that is suggested by you yes, could, could yes. work for, for that. Better, better. I think emulation is a. Uh, because every time, I mean, just a nice approach. And it's metamorphosed. And it is sometimes you use the uh, higher level semantic uh, approach to, to, I mean, to, because it's not literal matching byte by byte. It's not byte by byte. It's, it's, it's a little bit of high level, high level of semantics. Uh, uh, to, I mean, what, what, what I mean is just, uh, it's basically just metamorphism. And it's metamorphism. It's not just simple uh, polymorphism. 
is metamorphic in the code itself, just changes it every time. And um, the, the VN itself has been changed. At every time you use a different bytecode. So the okay. mirror itself just, I mean, just. I try, to I try to find a pattern. I try to run several times the same mirror in a virtual machine, for example, and I try to find a pattern, uh, a, a pattern and I try to uh, make a, a relation between this, this pattern. So I try to make a table, uh, a kind of mapping table uh, to try understand better how the uh, virtual machine from Temid works. I, I've been uh, done the same approach in uh, using uh, other uh, protectors, such as VM Protect, uh, Archan, Agile, and so on. So uh, the approach is almost the same. I try to uh, find, um, for example, I try to uh, split uh, my instructions in classes, in different classes. For example, jump instructions, uh, conditional instructions, uh, and so on. Uh, I try to uh, 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 map uh, some uh, Intel instructions to a virtualized instruction, and I make a whole table uh, uh, trying to uh, make a, a relationship between the Intel instruction to a virtualized instruction. However, uh, most people believe that all Intel instructions are virtualized. It's not true. Only a few of them. Uh, so I try to uh, uh, understand what instructions w were virtualized and what instructions weren't virtualized. I think everything is, has been virtualized except the virtual machine itself. I mean, virtual machine itself has been um, they could, I mean, they could run several levels of, yes. of virtual machine. Yes, yes. And they can just make it very complicated. Uh, um, uh, I mean, I, I'm just wondering, I mean, did, to make it quick, uh, how, wha what's your successful rate? I mean, has you, have you been successful to, uh, successfully to reverse every of them, or just uh, sometimes you just uh, also have some difficulties? Uh, most time I have problems to, no, I, I, I really want to know. <laughs> yeah, to yes, handle. I, I, I fail most of the time. Yes, but uh, most problem, uh, most time I have some problems to handle this kind of protectors using virtual machines. But uh, I've been, uh, I've been had some success, uh, about 50%. Fifty percent. Yes. Uh, that's very good. Uh, I honestly, I would like uh, to have one hundred percent. I hope so. Thank you very much. Any further questions? No more questions? Thank you so much for your time.